Hello everyone and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. I've been working on a few projects outside on days when the weather cools down enough to get outside and this little patch of grass next to the patio has always been a problem and the grass doesn't get enough sun and it's always patchy and muddy. So I need to make a few changes and we have an abundance of giant mondo grass on the other side of the yard. So I'm going to steal a few clumps to make a border. At first I thought I might line this entire area with Mondo grass, but when I started placing the grass I realized it would close in too much of this space, so I just decided to line up the grass to make a nice backdrop and to try and define this edge of this space. There's a black border that runs along the edge of the grass that runs parallel to the concrete patio, but the wall isn't parallel to the patio, so the dirt next to the grass widens as it gets closer to the house. And as you'll see a little bit later, I need to square off this space, and adding the mondo grass helps to create a border that will straighten things out. Last fall we overseeded and patched up the lawn and we fenced off the grass area and we found these fence panels that were easy to install and the fence has kept the grass green and we didn't want to keep the dogs completely off the grass but we did want to block off a direct path to the grass and the fence helps to redirect them to different areas of the yard so that they don't water the grass as much and there's still a few burn spots in the lawn here and there but the grass is in much better shape than it was last time this year. First, we just set up the fence around the entire patio, but the fence behind the porch swing was too close to the swing, so we had to move it out of the way, which created this enclosed patch of grass next to the patio. So when we moved the fence, this became the dog's favorite watering spot, and this little patch is mostly for the dogs, and it keeps them from killing the entire yard, so removing the grass altogether just creates another problem. And we've been struggling to come up with a good solution for this little patch that can survive both the dogs <laughs> and the shade and we considered some type of gravel or ground cover and even pavers but every option has its drawbacks so we decided to try something that just might turn out to be an epic fail so I'm not getting my hopes up and I'm not exactly a big fan of artificial turf for many reasons but it just seemed like the best option for this area and one of the biggest problems I have with turf is that it gets burn your hot feet in the sun but this area is in the 
shade most of the day, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And there wasn't much grass left in this area, so instead of removing it, we just cut the grass down to the dirt and then cover the whole area with weed cloth. And this is not the proper way to install artificial turf, but excavating the soil and filling it with gravel was, was too much time and energy to invest in something that I wasn't completely sure would work out. Hey. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. I had planned to just roll out the green carpet, but the problem with DIY projects is there's always a problem that waits to pop up until you're knee deep in the project. And we measured the space and had Home Depot cut off five feet of the roll. And when we rolled it out, it turned out to be too wide. And after a little measuring, I realized they gave us a few inches more than we asked for. So instead of cutting off the excess to make it fit, I need to move the border over a few inches, <laughs> but it was too hot and too late in the day to start that project, so I'll wait until the weather cools down a bit before I work on that problem. And another problem that I ran into is that the brick border behind the swing has sunk into the ground so that the brick is lower than the concrete and higher than the turf. And it'll be much easier to raise up the brick so that it sits flush with the concrete than to dig out the dirt to lower the turf. And when I move the border, I'll need to pull up the bricks and add more sand to level everything out. Pack our bags and get in that car Countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. And you may notice that I've been working on the porch swing. The paint was cracking and peeling and needed to be refinished. So I started stripping off the paint so that I could restore the wood finish, but well, it got too hot. <laughs> so I had to put that project on hold and I've been working on smaller projects that I can get done in the mornings before it heats up. And I had one more pot that I need to paint so that I can fill it with plants. And we painted most of the pots on the patio in this fossil color. And there's one more pot that just hasn't been painted and I've been wanting to add a little more interest so I'm going to introduce a creamy white color and I gave the pot a coat of primer and then a coat of paint and let it dry for a few days. I've had so many questions about these pots, but I haven't seen anything like them in years. We've had them forever, and I love these pots because they are so lightweight, and at the time, they were very inexpensive. We planted pansies too late in the spring, but they lasted for much longer than I thought they would. But it's time to clean out the pot so that I can replace them with something else. I can still hear the shimmering sound. The hill is near, let's get right up. Walk up to the very top. We couldn't tell the sky from the ground. I know my life. This rose topiary is something else that we bought in the spring, but it needs a bigger pot and it's been sitting in a basket waiting to be planted. And I added moss to cover up the dirt and conceal the pot, but the moss hasn't been getting enough water and it's burning up in the heat. So I just need to pull it out. Mm -hmm. 
and I haven't had much luck keeping roses alive on the patio. So far, I've killed every one that I've potted up, so I'm hoping that this one makes it. And the blooms on this rose tree have soft pink edges and a creamy yellow center, and there's a few buds that should be ready to open in a week or two. And I'm going to put a few white geraniums around the base of the plant. If you want to, I'm up for a kiss. I know it's tough. Don't let anybody tell you you're not enough. There are days when we all feel like we're messed up. But we know that we're all diamonds in the rough. In spite of all, we are all we got. There are some plants that help to repel mosquitoes, and marigolds have a strong smell that mosquitoes don't like. So I'm potting up a few to keep on the patio, and marigolds are pretty easy to grow from seed. Anytime we've planted marigolds, we always have volunteers that pop up all over the yard. So we only picked up a few of them, and once they go to seed, I'll plant up a few pots, and I'll scatter some of the seeds around the yard. I've always tried to grow perennials in pots on the patio, but adding annuals is something I started recently, and I'm not really sure how it's going to work out. I love gardening when I have the time, <laughs> but when life gets hectic, the plants get neglected, and annuals might require more time than I have, but there's something so peaceful about working with plants, and it's satisfying to transform a space with plants, and it's always rewarding to watch them grow <laughs> when I can actually keep them alive. I see it in your eyes Yeah, I can read the signs You need to get away It's time we make a change Oh, you know you'll always have me Baby, I will always stay with you So put your trust in Everything that I've potted up out here has been an experiment to see what works and what doesn't, and I've had pretty good luck with impatience in the shady area in front of the house, but I'm hoping that there's enough shade for them out here, and this area gets diffused and dappled sunlight for most of the day, and a few hours of direct sunlight in the late afternoons, and I always like to plant annuals close together. They fill in much faster that way, and I'm usually planting late in the season, <laughs> so they don't always always have a chance to reach their full size, and if I need to, I can always thin out a few plants later on. Place far, yeah, we could go for a ride. 
adding the two extra pots out here has thrown off the balance, <laughs> so I've been playing musical chairs with the pots trying to find an arrangement that works, and I found a white mandevilla vine and I thought it might add some height in this space, and I planted these vines out in the yard, but they don't seem to make it through the winter months, so I decided to try growing a vine in a pot to see if I have better luck keeping it alive. And if it doesn't work out, I can always try something else. And of course, a vine needs something to support it. And this standing trellis used to be out in the yard, but I'm adding the trellis to the pot so the vine has something to grow on. And we made it out of electrical conduit and we used a pipe bender to curb the tops. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. Agapanthus is one of my favorite flowering plants because it has such amazing blooms and it's a tough plant that's very hard to kill and we have agapanthus growing in a few places in the yard and this plant is drought tolerant but it doesn't like to be overwatered and we really don't need to buy agapanthus because it's so easy to divide <laughs> but this one has such amazing deep purple blooms that I just couldn't resist so I'm just going to plant it here for now so that we can enjoy the blooms but I'll move Move it out into the yard this fall. And it shows if I'm honest. You're the leaves in mid August. And I've come out here to say that I love you. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. I recently tried this trick that I've seen going around and normally I would dig a hole, pop the plant in only to discover that the hole was too deep or not deep enough. <laughs> and this way saves time because I can get the level of the soil just right and fill in around the pot. And then all I have to do is pop the plant into place. I get a lot of questions about the fountain and I'm not sure where we found it. It might have been Home Depot or Lowe's, but we've had it for several years and the base of the fountain is broken <laughs> and I just love the size and shape for this space and I've been searching for a replacement, but so far I haven't been able to find anything. But I will try to leave links in the description box below for anything that is still available.
During the summer months, we get days that don't cool down at night, and we get days when the early morning temperatures cool down enough to be outside for just a few hours before it heats up again. And it's the perfect time to check on things and see what needs to be watered and remove any spent blooms. And I've been battling with budworms on the geraniums, so the plants have lost a lot of blooms, but they're starting to recover. Keeping the pots up off the ground helps with the drainage and it also makes it easier to clean under them so that they don't stain the concrete. And I like to prop them up with pot feet or raise them up on stands and I like to use clay or ceramic feet and it can be hard to find a set with just a simple design but I usually have pretty good luck finding the feet at a local nursery or home improvement stores. And I spent a few days moving the pots around but once I had all the pots where I wanted them I was able to add the feet. I use these cork pads under pots to protect the furniture but they've been sitting in the garage for years and they turned out to make a good stand under the baskets. And of course the whole point of planting annuals is to have lots of flowers and fertilizer will help us get more blooms and some of the pots are attached to a drip so they get water automatically but most of them still need to be watered by hand so I just need to remember to fertilize the pots once a week. That's sure something I could use. Here for the air condition. Working in the yard has its rewards, but my favorite part is coming out here to just sit and relax whenever I have the time, even if it's only for a few minutes, and I love to come out here with a cup of coffee early in the morning before I have to wake up and get ready for the day. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps motivate you to spend more time outdoors. And remember to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time.